By popular demand, I thought I'd uh, do a video on our Lima shovel nose catfish, also called uh, common shovel nose catfish and uh, hockey stick catfish. That's uh, South America. And uh, oh, by the way, today is October 17th, 2020, and uh, I was gonna give you a little of our experience on uh, on these peculiar catfish that are hard to mistaken they're easily identified and in this tank uh, we've had them for uh, I mean this nine catfish we had for about five years since 2015 when I bought them at approximately three to four inch size and I bought 20 of them and this is half of the grouping and uh, the bigger ones graduated to the 1800 gallons and these smaller ones stayed behind in the 240 gallon for now to tell the truth I do not know why these are smaller and those other ones are bigger all of these range from about 12 to 14 inch and the bigger ones which I will show you later are about 18 to 20 inches long and there is nine of these and nine of those so it's roughly half and half I have a write-up uh, that I've been circulating on uh, monster fish keepers and otherwise where I, I, I was wondering why here in the United States we don't see that many lima shovel nose catfish grown in captivity to sizes larger than one foot literally I can count maybe three four times three four occasions where I know or I've seen the evidence of larger lima shovel nose than uh, 12 inches I'm talking like 16 18 20 24 because according to the scientific description, lima shovel nose should grow to about 24 inches, two feet long. So I didn't know for, for the longest time why we fail as a community to grow them larger. But at the same time, I've heard plenty of stories about the European peers who are successfully raising lima shovel nose to the appropriate, you know, one and a half to two foot size. So I was puzzled by that and I was trying to explain it and one of the explanations involved a different species. The scientific name for this catfish is uh, Sorobium lima, but there are three other members in that uh, genus, Sorobium, and one of them is called Sorobium elongatus. And that fish looks superficially very very similar to the lima. And according to the latest revision, the only reliable way to distinguish them is by examining the position of the mandibular barbels. Mandibular are the lower barbels on the lower chin, on the lower jaw. And where they're inserted with respect to the guler structure from the bottom. Guler is a kind of a feature on the throat. So Lima and Elongatus can have slightly different insertion of those barbells. And, uh, but again, you have to have good, good ventral photos and compare them. And I do not know whether uh, gender, age, matter. Uh, anyhow, so for the longest time I thought that instead of Lima we were getting Elongatus in our hobby because Elangados maxes out at one foot while Lima maxes out at two foot. So when I got this uh, group of uh, 18 to 20 Lima shovel nose five years ago, one of my goals was to sort it out. And as I have mentioned, half of them have stayed smaller, 12 to 14 inches, and half grew to currently eight, 18 to 20 inches. So, uh, for sure, 
I had to change my view on the topic and conclude that uh, we as a major the majority of the fish keepers we just fail to grow them uh, big enough and long enough fail to keep them long enough for them to grow bigger than a foot that's my current hypothesis but uh, again I cannot eliminate the presence of Ellen Gaddis at least it's not as prevalent as I thought before we're walking towards the other grouping of the larger larger ones that live in the 1800 gallons so these are from the same batch from the same uh, vendor that I bought in August of uh, 2015 and these are clearly much much larger and there are about nine or eight of them in there and some of them have uh, damaged snouts lima shovel nose are uh, skittish fish especially when the tank gets a little bit too tight they become skittish and darty and they tend to dart without any regard where the walls are and hit a wall and break their uh, upper jaw which is pretty strong believe me I tried to I tried to straighten them out and I found out how strong those jaws are I mean the bone structure is very strong but they still break them and that's what you see on some of our specimen I have uh, never had any problems feeding them never had to do anything special they learn by themselves to take pellets That's the one with the worst broken uh, snout. That's the worst case in, in my hands. That happened in my tank. Makes me pretty sorry. But the fish is fine otherwise. I mean, it feeds fine and grows fine. So anyhow, I, I would just offer my usual mix of uh, thawed fish pieces and pellets and uh, the little limas would pick and choose what they want and how they want and how much they want. I transferred them into. Tra I have transferred them to this 1800 gallon about. Uh, I want to say four months ago. And believe it or not, I I think I can see that they grew already. They grew some, and they grew better than in the 240 gallon tank they were before for five years. So that's very good news. I must conclude that uh, the space makes a lot of difference for the lima shovel nose. You gotta have a proper space for them to grow and thrive and reach their full potential. They're very active at the feeding time. They grab fish pieces and pellets very actively and with much gusto. And that leaves me quite satisfied. They're very interesting fish in the way that they hunt in the wild. They mimic a stick and they float almost vertically or semi-vertically in the weeds and among the driftwood, pretending to be just a floating stick until, an, uh, us, until uh, that's their ambush technique, until an unsuspecting prey comes along too close and they would uh, just grab it, inhale it. That's their... Uh, strategy but under right conditions it's, it's funny to see them all floating in unison more or less at an angle like 45 degrees or uh, 70 degrees or 90 degree angle float in unison doing exactly what I had just described they cannot do it in, a, in the strong flow of course stroke current would disrupt that 
So they do it in the areas where there is little flow or no flow. Again, they like to do it um, a lot of uh, vertical plants. Vertical driftwood would encourage this behavior. As you can see, my tank is pretty bare, except for a few rocks here and there. So uh, I don't have this incentive for them to try and to blend with the furniture and with the with this scape. They don't particularly care that I mean, you can raise them alone or in a school. Seems to be fine. In a school, there is some pecking order. There is some. Uh, differences being figured out often but not too bad I mean they they don't cause big damage to each other they have uh, they exhibit this uh, reflective kind of a skin on the top kind of a goldish light brown uh, iridescence and then the spots on the on the dorsal side look awesome and of course they always feature this uh, lateral dark stripe that includes the caudal uh, fin and, and then ends on the bottom lobe Of the caudal fin. They're highly alert, see how they react to my movements. They have very good vision, these ambush predators. I hope you can see the reflection and the iridescence I was just talking about. Even though this tank is uh, rather dimly lit. That's my little spiel on the uh, lima shovel nose catfish. Thank you guys for watching as always. Bye.